Nope. Nope. Not doing this tonight. I've been doing these videos for six years, and I like to think of myself as a fairly reasonable voice when it comes to Avs games, trying to give both sides of the argument when I can. But not today. Today, we are just venting. Avs lose to the Florida Panthers 4-1. to one. Alex Newhook! Oh, boy. Whoa! Mika! I could sit here and tell you that the Avs played better in this game, that they're still incredibly talented, that they could have won this game with a couple of bounces, and that they will be just fine. I believe all of those things to be true, but I'm not going to care tonight. Tonight, we are looking at a hockey game where the Avs didn't do the things they needed to do. They couldn't finish, they could not make a play when a critical moment happened, and they just did not get the job done. They need to be better, sure. Players looked good, especially some of the depth guys, but the defense was atrocious, top to bottom. The top line, Miko makes $9 million, more than that, in fact. McKinnon makes 6.3 right now, is going to make a whole lot more than that in a little bit. Landy just got a nice little raise. McCarr makes $9 million. Gerard makes $5 million, and that's supposed to be a steal of a deal. But right now, it looks like all of these dudes are getting paid by the turnover. It's just not fun hockey to watch. And that sucks. And maybe the most frustrating parts of these games are completely out of the Avs' control. The Avs hit two posts. The Florida Panthers hit one post. They lose that battle. And those were some of the Avs' best chances. That's right. The best opportunities for the Avs in this game don't even count as shots on goal. But the bounces aren't that frustrating, right? Those happen every single game. Well, you know what else that happens every single game that is incredibly frustrating? Referees. I mean, what was that? I legitimately question my sanity because I don't think I know any of the rules of hockey anymore. I don't know what a cross check is. I certainly don't know what goalie interference is. And I don't understand the point of the icing rule if it's not to protect the players. And yet, somehow... They got all of those calls wrong in my head in this hockey game. And it's not even one-sided against the Avs. It's not like that. They had a terrible makeup call on Florida after they got a free goal because Miko allegedly ran into Bobrovsky, which he was pushed in. Bobrovsky was not in the crease. Bobrovsky was playing the puck. And he tried to get out of the way. He barely touched him. What are we doing? I don't understand. And those things are an excuse. The Avs could have easily won this game if they just played better, but they didn't. I just want to watch a hockey game that isn't absolute nonsense. Is that too much to ask? The first period, the Avs actually looked relatively decent, at least compared to the Washington game. They controlled possession, they outshot Florida by a lot, and it just didn't matter because their execution was awful, particularly their best players. They just weren't good enough. I guess I should have known the type of night it was going to be on the first goal from Florida because just look at this nonsense. Sam Gerrard, Marchman, in a race for the puck on an icing potential situation. The puck is clearly going to go to icing before anyone can reach it. How many times have you seen this play happen? where the players are neck and neck like this, and the refs blow the whistle. Seems like it happens almost every time. Didn't happen this time, for whatever reason. And the exact thing that the NHL is trying to avoid with this icing rule, wouldn't you know, happens on this play. As they are going for the puck, Gerard gets run into. Pretty good argument this is interference, because, you know, neither of them have established position. Neither of them are even close to playing the puck. And Gerard just gets yeeted. Gerard initially would be hurt, as you can obviously tell, that did not go well. Thankfully, he was okay. And the rest of this play is fugly. The Avs are just kind of not defending behind Gerard once the icing gets waved off. Landy does whatever that was, decides he wants to fall over. There is no third back checker anywhere close to a man inside of the Avs' crease. Seems pretty good. And even then, JoJo somehow gets beat five hole. I said my piece on the icing thing. I think it's stupid. Whatever. We're moving on from that. The Avs still played pitiful defense on that play. You just cannot look at that and go, oh, no, this is fine. This is totally good. If that didn't convince you, how about the Avs goal? 
to keep it 1-1 in the first period. Something you should be excited about, but the play is just mass chaos. There is not a super high level of skill that made a great, fun-looking play. It's just weirdness. A nice play by Sam Gerrard to start this play. He actually did something decent tonight, it turns out. He finds McKinnon. McKinnon tries to walk in and get a shot off or something. Maybe it's a pass, but it, it doesn't work. It gets partially blocked. It's complete nonsense. The play goes to chaos, and Sam kind of sweeps through the middle, finds a puck at his skate, swings at it, doesn't really do anything effective with it, but it goes right to Miko. You can see it's already in the net because Miko's that fast. Complete chaos nonsense is the only Avs goal tonight. You'll love to see it. It's 1-1 one, one after 1. Here is a theory for the Avs. Maybe don't have the wheels fly off the car and into outer space in the second period. Give it a try. It might be interesting. The Avs gave up 23 shots on goal in the second period of this hockey game. 23. There are a dozen games last season, games, full games, where they gave up less shots than they gave up in the second period. Special teams nightmares continue. Another battle the Avs lost in this hockey game, and that's what end up giving the Panthers the game-winning goal. Even if the penalty is stupid, you still gotta play hockey. You can still stop them from scoring. Avs PKers have been on the ice for nearly a minute. They're able to clear it, but not clear it enough to get a change. So they're straight up exhausted, and they kind of get completely dunked on. I guess Helm gets off. Good for good for him. He's the one guy that managed to get off the ice. It doesn't matter anyway, because JT Comfort just kind of gets beat to the middle of the ice by Sam Bennett. And this is a good shot. There's a lot of bodies in front, traffic, whatever. It's a good shot, but you gotta get a save sometimes. Sometimes you gotta get one. The Avs got one, maybe two. They didn't get enough tonight. They weren't playing well enough. They needed saves to keep them in this game. That is not a save. Oh, but Rudo, that's not that bad. They're only down one goal, and it's because of the power play. The Avs can still get back into this game. Yeah, if they stop making stupid, boneheaded, unbelievably bad decisions and plays, maybe. It even looks like that. If the Avs go into the third period down one goal, really don't feel that bad about this hockey game. And then the last minute of the second period happens, and they just completely collapse in on themselves. I can't... I can't break this down. I can't explain this. You just have to be better. Less than a minute left in the period, and this shot comes on. It's a looper, nothing. JoJo puts it to the corner. Byron gets it, wins it, and chips it up the way to Landeskog. This is routine stuff. Should be out of the zone, in control. One of the two. Every single time. Certainly out of the zone would be the safe play. Landy tries to curl back, just forgets the puck. Just completely decides that he doesn't need that. And all of a sudden, Florida's still in the zone with possession. Landy's going to get beat off the blocks. McCarr gets confused, isn't really sure where to go, what to cover. So, nothing gets covered. Let's just let him walk all the way to the hash marks in the middle of the ice so he can shoot the puck, and terrible play gets rewarded with terrible luck as McCarr gets his stick out, gets it on the shot, and it gets deflected right past Jonas Johansson, but still in the net. You know I'm a big proponent of making your own luck when it comes to hockey, and a bounce like that is absolutely the Avs making their own luck in this period by getting dunked on. The third period comes, the Avs are down by two. They're supposed to be the team in the driver's seat, the team forcing play, the team all over the place. They get outshot eight to nine in the period. Not just outshot, but it's incredibly low event hockey. It's the exact opposite of what you would expect for a team that's down by two goals, especially a team like the Avalanche. The Avs never really get that close to coming back in the third period. Either they have some good chances here and there, but far too many chances fall to the wayside because they can't hold onto a puck. They can't make a pass. They're making stupid turnovers. They're struggling with every aspect of the game. It's not good enough, and it has to be better. That's it's, it's that simple. I don't have to say anything else. The Avs end up losing the game 4-1 to an empty netter, as is to be expected. The team's better than that. Be better. Look, obviously I didn't have the greatest day, but that's the great thing about sports. Sometimes you watch them because you get joy out of it, and it's super enjoyable, and it's fun. Sometimes you watch them, and you have a bad day, and the team had a terrible game, and you can use that to vent off some of your steam. And that's cool, too. Hell, some of you guys seem to hate the teams that you watch. I don't really understand it, but if you're getting something out of it, great. Awesome. That's what it's all about. Tonight, 
Had to be something a little different because I'm just done with this day and I'm done with the abs playing like that. I sure as hell hope the team is done playing like that too. The end.